when when we wanted to get Solitary Man made, and that was I wrote that movie myself, and Dave and I ended up directing it. Uh, but I wrote the script, and so, uh, and I knew that the script was good enough to get, like it was the best I could do. Um, and I knew it could attract an actor. And we, Steven Soderbergh read the script and gave it, loved it, and gave it to Michael Douglas and and. And then even at the beginning when it was like us and, and Michael and it, it, it was really hard to get the money for that movie raised. Um, and it, I felt really defeated early on. And then I remembered something that I'd read in uh, uh, Awaken the Giant Within about like taking some step every single day. It doesn't have to be a big step, some, doing something. I was like, all right, how am I going to remember to do something every day to try to get this movie made that the business is telling me is impossible? Hard to get this money raised mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons. Like if I if I would have changed the ending, I could have gotten the money, but I didn't wouldn't change mm -hmm. the ending. Um, and I at the time, Nike had these uh, this thing where you could um, design your own Nikes. Mm -hmm. And I went online and I they had this one where you could have a word that repeated on the shoe if you wanted. And so I wrote the word solitary man, the words solitary man in this thing. And I got these pink sneakers that um, were like covered in the, I just had the word solitary man written um, on the toe a bunch of times. And I wore the shoes every single day for a year until we got the movie made <laughs> so that I would look down and I would see it said solitary man. And I would be like, I have to make a phone call or send <laughs> an email or do something to try to get the movie made. And it was like every day yeah. it's like, Oh fuck, I'm wearing these fucking sneakers again. Uh, but I'll tell brain you hacking, brain hacking. I will tell you the <laughs> day that I walked onto the set wearing those shoes with the holes in the soles of them, because I'd worn those shoes every fucking day for like 18 months to then walk on set wearing those shoes and and there's Michael Douglas and we're filming it. Yeah. Like that is kind of like nuts to do <laughs> in a way, but I was just like, well, I am not gonna be able to live with myself if I don't find a way I've written this story. And it wasn't because I wanna call myself writer because of career, it was because I had um, a need to tell this story in this way I'd written this script. Uh, my partner was ready to direct it with me. I, Michael Douglas was a dream of my life to work with. And it was like, I can't allow this not to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't matter who tells me no. Uh, and you, so you, you, you get in this mindset because it's not a casual thing like, hey, I'll produce. It's like, okay, what's this require? I guess this requires me fulfilling that function and then understanding what that means like, okay, it's not going to be easy. I'm not going to be flipping about it. That's why I said at the beginning, have crazy dreams, but then the rigor work with it, know that it's going to cost you a lot. Mm -hmm. It's going to require a tremendous amount of rigor, of, of work, of rejection, of barreling through of pain. Mm -hmm. And then just trust yourself that it's going to be worth it on the other side. And these techniques of sort of treating your brain like this hackable software, if I could create an environment that will that will sort of trick me into staying yeah. on course. Like ever since I started writing down stuff in front of me, I'm like, okay, I can leave a whiteboard right there. I put the it things It works. Out. Because the brain creatively can be so chaotic that things just pop up. Oh, I should do that. I should do that. I should go here. This is all exciting. But then channeling it into a disciplinary, you know, regimen is, well, is what yeah, makes and the it, difference. Look, and, it, and it all sounds also almost too good to be true because when you tell it in reverse, mm -hmm. when, you, when you tell it in reverse, it sounds like, well, of course, or it sounds easy um, mm. because we've already done it. But what you need to know if you're listening to this is like, it sucks. <laughs> and it's every, your failure is most of the time what's happening. Like right. most of the time in a creative pursuit, you're not doing it as well as you want to. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be as good as David Mamet or mm -hmm. the Coen brothers. It, you're going to come up against the limits of your talent, ability, brain, energy. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to wonder, as I did, if it's going to, but if you can do it, mm -hmm. it's really hard. I mean, look, not hard like you're, Holocaust surviving grandparents. That's the other thing, right? Mm -hmm. Only hard in the context of once you lay a dream out for yourself, you feel like a failure if you don't achieve it. <laughs> um, like you're letting yourself down. But so I, I didn't just, take the script. Well, 
you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hear that's hard, but yes. I mean, <laughs> saying you know, it's yes. So you, I'm but also relative, having an awareness of that. Being one grateful. of the gifts of living in New York City yeah. is if you have eyes. You walk around New York City, you're just aware yeah. in every moment of what real fucking champagne problems versus you sadness know. and failure <laughs> looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. But then within the context of wanting to be an artist, mm -hmm. the taking steps is the only thing. So